Good morning. All right, we are in uh, John chapter 7, verses 40 through 42 today. Let's go ahead and um, pray, and then we'll read the scripture for the day. Father, we come before you um, needing your word, needing your truth to change our hearts. God, we pray that as we read your word, you would give us hearts that are soft and that are submissive to you that desire to truly know you and not just assume we know you. God, it is our greatest need and uh, desire to know you as you are. So please grant us that today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, let's go ahead and read um, John 7, 40 through 52. When they heard these words, some of the people said, This really is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Is the Christ to come from Galilee? Has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the offspring of David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was? So there was a division among the people over him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. The officers then came to the chief priests and Pharisees, who said to them, Why did you not bring him? The officers answered, No one ever spoke like this man. The Pharisees answered them, Have you also been deceived? Have any of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd that does not know the law is accursed. Nicodemus, who had gone to him before, and who was one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man without first giving him a hearing and learning what he does? They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Search and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. Uh, sorry. <laughs> that was weird. All right, so that's the word of God to us today in the book of John. All right, let's... um. Let's make some observations. So we see uh, that there was division among the people concerning Jesus. Some of them said he was a prophet or the prophet. Some said he was the Christ. And still others questioned um, where he came from because the scriptures said that the Christ would come from Bethlehem. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. So the Pharisees accused the officers who returned to them of being deceived when they didn't arrest Jesus and they incited the way they, that he spoke. The, um, the Pharisees said that the crowd, not knowing the law, is accursed. Nicodemus argued that according to their law, they should at least give him a hearing and then the other Pharisees mocked him, saying, uh, asking if he was also from Galilee. So this passage, um, we see multiple different people reacting to Christ and his ministry, his words. Um, we see that um, all, of their in, all of their reactions are based off of a lack of information, although some are at least paying attention to the information they do have which is a good sign. Uh, some of them have a little information that they think is complete information, and they're not um, interested in finding more. They're just writing him off. And then others um, should have plenty of information, i.e. the Pharisees, and they're um, unwilling to learn the truth about him or unwilling to um, submit to the truth that maybe they already know. So some things that are being said about him in this passage are that he's the prophet. This is true. That he's the Christ. This is also true. That he's from Galilee. This is true. And then uh, uh, one group makes the observation that, that shouldn't the Christ be coming from Bethlehem? Um, this is true. But they're missing something <laughs> because they don't know Christ as well as they think they do. Um, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. They're assuming something to be true about Christ, which is leading them to believe something about Christ. Um, and since the thing they're assuming is not true, 
then the thing they believe about Jesus is not true. This is really important for all of us as Christians who have placed our faith in Christ. Um, we need to um, really make sure that what we believe about Christ is based in the truth of God's word, what is really said about Christ. Um, when you make assertions about Christ and his character or react to situations in a way that you believe is according to the character of Christ, you need to, to make sure that you are actually doing that accurately according to Scripture and how Scripture um, represents Christ. If you don't, you're in serious danger of, at the very least, misrepresenting Christ and then possibly placing your faith in a person that does not exist. Or... Um, allowing your faith to be tried or undermined by something that is not true about Christ. Um, so these, these people in the crowd, they, they have truth. They know that the Christ is to come from Bethlehem, but they believe something inaccurate about Jesus, which leads them to falsehood um, and keeps them from belief in him. And that could be just because they have hard hearts and they don't want to know more of the truth. Uh, we, we, we don't know these individuals' hearts, but I don't think it was a secret. Jesus wasn't keeping it a secret that he was from Bethlehem. But some people will find one little thing or another um, that they use as a justification to deny Christ. When in reality they're setting up a straw man that they can deny. Oh, isn't he supposed to come from Bethlehem? This guy came from Galilee. Don't, don't tell me where he was born. Don't talk to me about that. I've already denied him because of this fact that I'm assuming is true. Um, so they had false beliefs about Jesus, and it led them to, or it, it was rooted in um, false information they were believing, which could have been rooted in hard, unrepentant hearts. Now, the officers, this is another class of people that were um, reacting to Christ, and they had a job that they were given that they actually disregarded because they saw something in Christ, some authority that they um, knew, instinctively knew, was greater than the authority given to them to go arrest Christ. They heard him speak, and, and the authority that he spoke with they clearly understood was greater than the authority given to them by the Pharisees to arrest this man. And that's why when, um, when they returned to the Pharisees and, and they questioned them, why didn't you arrest him? Why didn't you bring him here? They said, no one, no one ever spoke like this man. They're citing the authority in his words. And the tacit understanding is that um, this man's speech in us over road the authority that you had that commanded us to arrest him and this had to be infuriating for these men who loved power and loved their own authority and and why am i so confident in, in saying they loved power and loved their own authority because of what they say next have any of the authorities or the pharisees believed in him so they understand that these officers are talking about the authority in christ's words and they're not having it He's not the authority you need to be paying attention to, they're saying. We're the ones who tell you what goes on here. We're the ones who have been um, leading you. And it's us you need to listen to. It's our authority that you need to be concerned about because that's the authority they're concerned about. So um, this had to have been, and, and according to their words, it was extremely frustrating and maddening for them they appeal to their own authority. Christ's words are the authority of God, which of course is higher than the authority of the Pharisees. But they have already disregarded the authority of God and set up their own power and authority as the prime authority um, for the people in Israel. So they are at direct, um, they're in direct opposition to God not submitting to his authority and promoting their own. And then they say something that's quite 
um, telling. It's actually an accusation they're throwing at these people. Um, the crowd that does not know the law is accursed. Well, the people may not know the law very well, which might actually be an indictment on the Pharisees and their leadership of the people, but they are seeing Christ and they are responding again to the authority in his words that's given him by God. And when, um, when we look at Jesus, we actually see um, that he is God's word made flesh. John makes that very clear, right? God's word made flesh. He's actually God in the flesh. God's character made visible. And the law is based on God's character. God's law that he gave to his people is a communication of the character of God. Jesus is a physical representation, in a way, of the law. And he's here to fulfill the law. Everything he does honors God's law. And so when these, this crowd actually listens to Christ and honors him, they are actually honoring and listening to God's law. So in a way, they actually know God's law more than the Pharisees, which the Pharisees then go on to demonstrate. Uh, because um, Nicodemus, right, he brings up to them this, you know, this fact that, you know, doesn't the law say, I mean, since you guys brought up the law, the crowd doesn't know the law, doesn't the law say that we shouldn't accuse a man without giving him a hearing? Doesn't the law say that? And their basic, their basic uh, response is, don't bother us with the law. Are you from Galilee too? So they're accusing the crowd of not knowing the law. And they're actually ignoring the law. And they just mock him. Are you from Galilee too? Look, just look at, look at, the, look at the scriptures and, and you can see that no prophet arises from Galilee. Very dismissive. Let, don't bother us with the facts. Our authority is being questioned. You need to get in line like everyone else and obey what we what we say um, and by doing this I believe that the judgment that they judged this crowd with is actually la landing on them this state of being accursed this crowd that does not know the law is accursed well then how much more these Pharisees who do know the law and ignore it and when the law, the word, God's word comes in the flesh, they want to kill it. How much more are they accursed? And what about us? How do we deal with the law? How do we deal with Jesus? And do we hear the law and ignore it? Do we look at others who are actually obeying God's word but doing something that we personally don't want them to do, and we say they're accursed? And by doing so, are we perhaps bringing that judgment upon ourselves? It's sobering thoughts that we need to be very aware of. God's law is eternal. It is um, contained in the person of Christ as he, he came as the flesh and how we respond with his words, all of his words, not just the ones we want to pick out as our favorites. My favorite verse here, my favorite verse there, but all of Christ's words, the way we deal with those is crucial to um, whether or not we are actually submitting to Christ and his authority. And certainly we all fail and we can repent of that. We can and must repent of that. But we can't let our pride keep us from repentance. Let's pray to God that, that he shows us the mercy to bring us to repentance. My conclusion for today, 
Oh my. Weird things happening today. Okay. Um, <laughs> my conclusion for today is that when our hearts are consumed by pride, we deceive ourselves and reject God's authority in favor of our own. We prove ourselves to be hypocrites and fools, condemning ourselves with the judgment we place on others. So again, we, when our hearts are consumed by pride, we deceive ourselves and reject God's authority in favor of our own, like the Pharisees did. We prove ourselves to be hypocrites and fools, condemning ourselves with the judgment we place on others, which is exactly what they did. God, please show us mercy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, pull us out of our prideful, stubborn ways, God. Please show us our sin and give us hearts that will repent of it. God, make your word real to us and change us through its power. Help us to seek your Son, Jesus, the Christ the physical representation, not just representation, the actual word of God made flesh. Let us look to him as our, our savior, placing our trust in him and submitting to him and his words because they are the words of eternal life. We pray these things in his name, in the name of Christ Jesus, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day. I'll see you again. <laughs>